after the first episode of the Linus Tech Tips Linux Gaming Challenge, there was a lot of outrage. Some was because Linus made mistakes that some people felt like he shouldn't have made, but a lot of the other outrage was about a problem that happened in PopOS, where Linus tried to install Steam and he ignored the warning it showed, or he just didn't read the warning, proceeded through that warning, and then App decided to completely delete the PopOS GUI. I am fully standing behind the fact that Linus has at least some level of responsibility to make sure that if a warning shows up, he doesn't delete his entire system, but a bug like this never should have been shipped in the first place, and it never should have made its way through QA testing. Especially when PopOS is really, really popular for doing gaming, this is something that should have been tested. But the problem did happen, and rather than sitting around complaining about it and blaming different parties, oh, Linus should have done this, oh, System76 and PopOS should have done this, that's not going to help anyone. What we do is we move forward and we try to mitigate the problem in the future so if it does happen again, it's not going to be anywhere near as bad. So right now there are two approaches for this being handled. One of them by PopOS and the other one by the Debian team. I haven't heard anything about an Ubuntu solution but it's very likely that Ubuntu is just going to use whatever Debian does upstream. Let's start off with the PopOS solution because this one's actually been merged into the project. Now, when I say it's a PopOS solution, what I mean is PopOS actually has their own fork of apt. So any of the changes here only exist on the PopOS version of apt. It's not going to affect Debian, Ubuntu, or the millions of Ubuntu forks out there. So basically what's going to happen is because PopOS is designed to be, you know, a user-friendly, a beginner-friendly distro, you're by default not allowed to break your system. Now that might sound pretty bad. So previously what it did is it gave you this prompt saying, yes, please do as I say. Now it instantly kills out of the program saying this operation is not permitted because it will break your system. And then it just aborts out. This is only going to happen with core system projects, so if you want to remove something like your text editor, it's not going to complain about that, but something like, you know, System D or the Pop Shell, you'll get this error. I can already see the comments now, I use Linux, give me the freedom to break my system, and you can still do that, it's just by default you won't be able to. So what you have to do now is if you create a file in slash etsy slash apt slash break dash my dash system, it's going to work the exact same way it did before. Now this is pretty simple, but honestly a perfectly functional hack job solution to mitigate the damage really as quickly as possible. But because it's a hack job, I kind of have some serious concerns. So even when you do go and make that file, it still has that yes do as I say prompt. And that really doesn't hold any weight about what you're really trying to do. It holds about as much weight as showing the admin prompt on Windows and getting you to type your password. It's not saying, oh yeah, this could be a pretty big problem. Think about what you're actually doing. Also, it's still just a massive wall of text. It's kind of hard to discern what packages will actually be removed. Obviously, if you know to look right here, sure, you, you know that's where you need to look. But, look, if I see all of this in my terminal, I can totally understand why you'd be overwhelmed. Now, you might be saying this line right here about, oh, you shouldn't do this unless you know exactly what you're doing, or this could be potentially harmful, basically does the job of saying this might break your system. But literally everything you do with sudo is something that could potentially be harmful. If you modify a system config file, let's say your sudo config, and you modify it wrong, well that's potentially harmful because now you can't use sudo. It doesn't have the same sort of weight as this may break your system, proceed with caution. The other problem I have with this solution is that apt already has a config file. It's in slash etsy slash apt slash apt.conf. Why is this an extra file and not just a config option? The reason why it's like that is because working out how the apt options work much harder than just getting it to check if a file exists. But I think if they want to go forward with this solution, that's probably a much more elegant and much cleaner option to go with. And also, this solution 
isn't actually documented in the official Pop! OS documentation. The only place this is documented is inside of this pull request and on a post on Stack Exchange. Now, I expect this to be changed, but if you're going to push something out to your users, usually you would expect to do those things, you know, at the same time. Now, due to Debian's different repo configuration, I don't believe this is possible on base Debian, but it very well could happen, and do not quote me if it ever does. But distros like Ubuntu are based on Debian, and distros like that, it absolutely is possible. So Jeremy Sola, one of the Pop! OS maintainers, Pop! OS developers, decided to go and create an issue on the Debian version of Apt and try to push up this solution. But the Debian developers wanted absolutely nothing to do with this solution, not because the problem didn't need to be addressed, but because, look, it, it wasn't a good solution. For a few days after this was opened up, a couple of solutions were being discussed, with probably the most popular being an option when you actually run apt. Not a config option, but an option you include, like, in the command line. So that option would be dash dash allow dash remove dash essential. And the way that would work is the default behavior of apt would now no longer allow you to remove essential packages, regardless of whether that is by doing it implicitly where you're trying to replace a package. Let's say you want to install a different init system to system D that's not going to work. If you try to explicitly remove it, that will not work as well. And even if you include that option, it's going to tell you if you want to remove this system package, you must do it explicitly. So if you want to replace, I don't know, Grub, for example, with systemd boot, you would need to uninstall Grub and then install system deboot. This is to stop you accidentally removing something that is core to the system when you didn't realize that was going to be the case. Yes, it does add an extra step if you are the sort of person who replaces system packages, whether you're building your own distro or you just like making your own custom version of Debian, but I think ultimately it is a better solution and does stop those mistakes happening from less experienced users. And obviously, if this is the solution they go with, then this option would be included in the man pages alongside all of the other options. Now, there is still one question that remains. If the new option is used, should the old prompt that was there also show to the user as well? So should you have to go and put the option in and also say yes to as I say? No one's really sure about what should really be done there. What they are sure about, though, is the prompt really wasn't a good prompt and probably should be changed. Yes to, as I say, as I was saying earlier, doesn't really hold that much weight and doesn't really explain properly what you are doing. So right now the prompt reads something like this. So you have the package list, you have dependency tree, massive wall of text. It'll tell you stuff about the packages that are being upgraded, installed, removed, and so forth, how much space you'll be saving. Yes, this is harmful. Do as I say. This wall of text is something that 99% of users probably aren't going to read all of. And there's probably going to be something in there they don't want to remove. So the way it would work with a new prompt is pretty much the same, but saying, you're about to break your system, type, do as I say, break my system. This is something that's going to make most users stop and think for a moment, wait, Maybe I should go back up and try to read that wall of text. Obviously, the wall of text can be improved. For example, with uh, this right here, actually adding in some highlighting to say, hey, pay attention to these bits. But I didn't think of this earlier. Uh, someone else mentioned this in this thread. Highlighting doesn't work if you use a screen reader. And if you want to worry about accessibility, that's something that has to be considered. But even if you don't understand the wall of text and understand what's actually being done, seeing this prompt and seeing it say, do as I say, break my system, should at least make you go and search for what's happening here, put it into like Google or whatever search engine you use and see what other people are saying. So the best of my knowledge, none of these solutions have been merged into apt yet. And there's kind of a good reason for that, but it's a reason that, it, it's not great for the user. So 
Pop OS can change whatever they want, whenever they want, because it is just a user distro. Debian, though, is the base for a lot of other projects, and because of that, it needs to have a fairly substantial deprecation period, not just for those distros, but for all of the tools that are built around app and built around the way that it currently works. While you can add in warnings that tell the user, hey, this has been deprecated, you should stop using this much, much earlier, full removal is unlikely to happen until Debian 13 and Ubuntu 24.04. So like two to three years away, which is not great. Now, as for why this problem actually showed up on PopOS with the Steam package, what seems to be the case is because Steam is an i386 package, basically it's a 32-bit package, it's obviously going to have other i386 dependencies. Now, one of the reasons why you use PopOS instead of Ubuntu is some of the things in the PopOS repos are going to be more up-to-date than those in the Ubuntu repos, but on PopOS, you can install stuff from both the Ubuntu and also the PopOS repos, so you have a much wider selection of software. Now, one of the dependencies that Steam relied on was not available in the PopOS repos. Now, because App was not able to actually find all of the dependencies, it tried to find the next version of Steam that was going to have all of its dependencies met. That version was in the Ubuntu repos. So, when that was installed, App then decided, oh wait, all of these other packages are now way too up to date to be what's inside of the Ubuntu repos. They've all got to be downgraded. And some of the things that are used on PopOS relied on that newer software. So all of that stuff didn't have its dependencies met, meaning it all had to be removed. Basically, the entire chain just crumbled apart and it reverted back to what was on the Ubuntu repos. At the end of the day, Bugs happen. Sometimes things like this are going to be missed in QA and are going to make their way to the user. And there's no way to ultimately stop users from accidentally breaking their system if they either make a mistake or they fall into one of these bugs they don't realize was there. But mitigation steps can be taken. And if these steps were here, it would not have been anywhere near as bad of a problem for Linus. What he probably would have done is gone and installed like the flat pack version and just went about his day. That's going to be it for me. Let me know your thoughts on this solution in the comment section down below. And if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, check out my Patreon subscribers only bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech of a T available basically anywhere. Gaming channel called Brother Ops and Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five of YouTube shorts. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.